Hello, so far we have been shining monochromatic light through our double slits. Have you ever wondered what if we use a white light instead? So white light is not monochromatic. White light consists of the entire visible spectrum. So from as short as 400 nanometers to as long as 750 nanometers. Some books say 700 nanometers, some books say 750 nanometers, but that's not important. So let's say this is the interference pattern formed by monochromatic green light through a double slit. If you shine a beam of white light instead, we will see this interference pattern instead. Wow, looks so colorful. What's happening here? So here, I've sketched the intensity profile of the interference pattern formed by monochromatic green light. How would the intensity profile for the blue light look like? Like this, right? So notice the bright fringes are formed closer together compared to the green. Why is that so? Ah, remember? The fringe separation is given by L lambda over D. So blue light has a shorter wavelength, right? So with a shorter wavelength, the fringe separation is also smaller. That's why the bright fringes are more closely packed. So red light will be the opposite. Red light will have its bright fringes uh, further spaced apart. Now let's see whether we can match the graphs, the intensity profiles to the actual colors we see here. So why is it whitish at the middle? Ah, because the zeroth order bright fringes for all the wavelengths, all the different colors are formed here, right? So we have all the colors present here, so we get white light here. But notice at the two ends, you have some kind of reddish tinge, right? Ah, that's because you got more red than the other color lights here. Because here you already have the dark fringes for the shorter wavelengths, yeah? The blue, the green, that's roughly where the dark fringes are. Uh, but the red has not quite hit its dark fringe. That's why there's a bit of reddish tinge on these two sides. It's kind of dark here because all the wavelengths are having their dark fringes about here. But then you start to have the blue tinge. That's because the blue is already working its way towards its bright fringe, the first order bright fringe. And then down here, you get all the different colors. It's quite messy, lah. depending on which wavelength is nearer is a bright fringe, you have more of the colors there. And you know, all the different colors will superpose to give you all the different colors as well. Now, if I want to see a clear rainbow spectrum here, I shouldn't be using the double slit, I should be using the grating. Because the grating produces very narrow bright fringes, right? So the green lights will produce its bright fringes like this, the blue lights like this, and red light like this. If you're wondering why the different color lights do not form the bright fringes at the same positions, well, it's because d sine theta is equal to n lambda. So blue lights with the shorter wavelength will have its bright fringes form at smaller theta. That's why the first order blue fringe is formed before the green, which is formed before the red. If we are using white lights, of course, we have the entire spectrum from the most blue to the most red, and the result will look something like this. So right at the middle, you have the zeroth order white fringe because all the wavelengths will still form that zero of order bright fringe here at theta equals to zero and then you got the dark space here before you get the ah the very beautiful first order rainbow spectrum starting with the blues first order ending with the reds first order and then you got the dark space here before the second order bright fringe starts it starts here and ends here and then you have the third order rainbow spectrum starting from here ending here so we only have a distinct rainbow spectrum here but the second order and the third order rainbow spectrums it kind of overlap somewhere here so you see if you want to spread light into its components besides the prism you can also use the diffraction grating in fact the grating will give you many many rainbow spectrums but usually we use the first order bright fringe only because the higher orders ones uh, well they tend to overlap and also they tend to be dimmer. Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!